Hi everybody, I'm Emily and this is Leslie back for this week's edition of Tuesdays at 2. This week we have some pretty important email marketing trends that you need to know about moving forward this year. That's right. So for many years we've been hearing people say that email isn't important or that spam filters are taking eyeballs away from the messages and tuning them out, which is not true. Not at all. Email is still one of the best and simplest and cheapest ways to engage your audience, mm -hmm. okay? Plus, recent studies have found that people's trust in social media is declining. I believe that. I do too. So obviously, it's not going to completely disappear, but it does open up more attention and focus for your email marketing. Opportunity. Yes. <laughs> so knowing that all this, here are five email marketing trends to pay attention to in 2019. That's right. So trend number one, more text-only emails. So I know this might sound a little crazy because I feel like everybody has been conditioned to think you got to do yeah. images, Beautiful. you got to do fun graphics <laughs> to get their attention, but no, it's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. A well-written, thought-out, text-only message will win every time in the inbox. Yeah, crazy. Okay, so number two kind of builds on number one, and that is more storytelling. Mm -hmm. So obviously, since telling more long-form stories suits itself mm -hmm. to more of a text only format, mm -hmm, right? True. So marketers have known about the power of a good story for years, obviously, right? And this trend is only increasing as the best email marketing strategies develop over time. Mm -hmm. Same thing we talked about last week with video, more personal, yep. long form stories. Yeah, people want to relate to you. Yeah. Uh, tell them, tell them the story. Mm -hmm. All right, so this kind of, uh, again, yeah. builds on the first two. Number three, personalize, personalize, personalize. So try sending emails that include the reader's first name in the second or third paragraph or information that's unique to them within the message, or you can even segment within your buyer personas. Some contacts can group contacts by personality, yeah. while other group contacts by behavior. Mm -hmm. Personalized content sent to each group that's relevant to their opinions and their behaviors yeah. is just a win, okay? This makes the material feel more personal, yeah. more relevant, more tailored toward that person's unique experience. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, we've been hearing a lot about personalizing by um, generation, right? Oh, yeah, Obviously, right. they read Gen Z, millennials, yeah. Generation yeah. X. Very okay, so number four is keep things casual. Sure. So obviously if you're telling a story to your friend, you want to you know, <laughs> use big fancy words that they can't understand, right? So humor, mm -hmm. a sense of playfulness is becoming more common in emails, and these sorts of messages are getting better results. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you may have even noticed more curse words in some of the emails you're receiving. <laughs> That's because mm -hmm. in general, the tone <laughs> and voice of marketing emails is becoming more casual and informal. Nice. So if you have doubts about this, try an A-B test, right? Mm -hmm. So send a few emails maybe that are a little more you know, in more informal and then maybe some that are more, you know, what you're used to, maybe a little more businessy and formal and see which ones kind of work better for you. Right. Is this was something that kind of drives me crazy when people send emails or marketing pieces that sound like a robot or sound like really yeah. corporate. It's like talk the way that you would want to be talked to. Like yeah. you talk to your friends, like use your voice. It just makes such a difference. Yeah. And so sounds simple, but it can be a little tricky to pull yeah, off. For so sure. Play around with it in test, like Emily said, the A B testing. Yeah. There you go. All right, number five, don't forget about smartphones, smarty pants. Okay, so mobile responsiveness is no longer a nice to have. It's mandatory, okay? Yeah, yeah. we told you that at the end of 2018. It's not allowed <laughs> this year. It's not allowed. No, you have to have your stuff be formatted for mobile. So your email should look good and appear nicely on mobile devices or tablets, etc. So I'm going to drop some crazy numbers on you again just to support this, okay? So Statista reports that the number of smartphone users worldwide will exceed 2.8 billion by 2020. Wow. That's not even a year away, you guys. <laughs> 2.8 billion smartphone users by wow. 2020. And then mobile email accounts, um, that is 22% to 77% of all email opens. Wow. So it's kind of a large range, but again, yeah. so many people have their smartphones. You can check it while you're waiting in line, while you're yeah. in line for the drive-thru, while you know, sometimes yeah. you're bored at a meeting. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, this is a must. If you yeah. aren't told to this, you can kiss your engagement goodbye and say hello to increasing unsubscribe rates. So yeah. we don't want that. You don't want that. Get at it with the mobile responsiveness. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so these are all super simple tactics that you can start implementing today, yes. right? And to really start slaying your email marketing this year. Slay. Yeah. So which, tell us which ones you're going to use first. We mm -hmm. want to know which one you're going to use first. Tell us in the comments. Yeah, okay? we'd love to hear it. Okay, until next week, I'm Emily and this is Leslie. Bye, guys. Bye.